European intellectuals also considered economic questions. As I mentioned, social philosophers and moral philosophers and people who became economists tried to apply the same types of thought processes and logic to the social world as the physical sciences were applying to the natural world. Capitalism, the idea that invested wealth can become the engine for economic and social and technological change, was most famously explained by the English moral philosopher Adam Smith. An ongoing agricultural revolution was contributing to increased crop production and population growth through the 16th and 17th centuries that led to people who no longer needed to farm to support their subsistence being able to gather in towns and cities and begin to engage in artisanal activities. Metropolises that had once been mainly centers of commerce and government and church administration began to become production centers and produce goods for trade as well. Even before the Industrial Revolution and the beginning of mechanized textile factories in Great Britain, for example, weavers lived and worked in districts like East London for generations. People began to specialize in particular trades, making products for customers beyond their own families or neighborhoods or villages. Some general purpose craftsmen like blacksmiths became increasingly specialized, focused on manufacturing products with broader mass markets, for example, guns or carriage springs, rather than just the horseshoes and nails and hinges and whatever the locals needed from day to day. Banks in Europe began forming financial networks that standardized across larger regions, such as Italy and the Low Countries and along the Baltic coast. When transportation and communication are poor, there are a lot of opportunities for what's called arbitrage buying products cheap where they're abundant and then taking them someplace else and selling them for a profit where they're scarce. As these communication networks and transportation networks improved, these opportunities decreased, or at least they were pushed farther and farther away. Politics and finance were very connected at this time. Capitalism did not develop in a vacuum. Although Adam Smith famously described what he called the invisible hand, of market forces in 1776 in an inquiry on the wealth of nations, merchants were heavily involved in government in England and throughout Europe, and they influenced their nation's policies and regulations, taxes and tariffs to favor their own goals. And as we'll also talk about in later chapters, imperial expansion and colonial armies were often indispensable for the spread of trade and capitalism throughout the world. So before I move on, one question. Is it significant that the stories that we tell today about the capitalist system focus on this invisible hand and stress freedom in spite of the close ties between business and government in capitalism's development?